long ago, in a fairy tale kingdom, there reigned a king and queen who, although they had everything that money could buy, were sad because they had no child to love. They lived in a palace surrounded by a beautiful garden that was cared for by six flower fairies. Once there had been seven fairies in the garden, but the seventh, Deadly Nightshade, had been sent away because of her wicked and cruel ways. One summer evening, the flower fairies heard someone crying. It was the queen. She was sitting all alone in the garden. Oh, how I wish I had a baby girl to love and care for! She sobbed. The flower fairies were sad for the queen. And so, with a flick of their magic wands, they granted her wish. By the following summer, the king and queen were the happy parents of a lovely baby girl. They decided to call her Rosebud because she was as beautiful as a little rose. The king and queen organized a party to celebrate, and invitations were sent to all the people and fairy folk in the kingdom. All that is, except one. The day of the party arrived. There was laughter and music and singing and dancing. The guests presented their gifts, and Baby Rosebud cooed her thanks and smiled sweetly. There were presents of all kinds, including a pretty doll and a musical box that played a soothing lullaby. Finally. It was the turn of the six flower fairies. They waved their magic wands and gave Baby Rosebud the kinds of gifts that only good fairies can. My gift to you is happiness," said the sunflower fairy as she glimmered. "Mine is gracefulness," said the lily fairy as she shimmered. "My gift to you is loveliness," said the violet fairy very prettily. "And mine is that of cleverness," said the pansy fairy. Cute and wittily. My gift to you is kindness," said the rose fairy, perfuming the air. She then kissed Princess Rosebud gently and softly caressed her hair. Then suddenly there was a thunderous noise, a flash of green light, and a piercing cackle. The guests all gasped and shrank in terror as they saw the wicked fairy, Deadly Nightshade. She glared at the frightened queen with her piercing eyes and screeched, "My gift to you, dear Rosebud, is that of pain and death. On her sixteenth birthday, she will die. She will take her final breath. The cause shall be a spinning wheel whose spindle I shall poison. She will prick her finger and shall die. And this shall be the reason you chose not to invite me. But I'm sure now you wished you had, because I can be very wicked and so very, very bad. With that, she waved her wand. And with a cruel cackle of laughter, vanished with a flash. The poppy fairy had yet to give her gift and appeared next to the baby's cradle. She waved her magic wand, and the silence was broken by her soothing voice. I cannot change this wicked spell, but I can rid you of your fears. She will not die, but fall asleep for one hundred years. After which a handsome prince shall find her softly sleeping. He'll kiss her gently, and she'll awake to be in his love's keeping. There was a sigh of relief from all around. Even so, one hundred years seemed a very long time to be asleep. The king ordered that all the spinning wheels in the land were to be burned immediately. He then thanked the guests for coming. And the party was over. Well, your Majesty, I have come here without an invitation. Why didn't you invite me? I am the most important fairy in the kingdom. Oh dear, you must be the old fairy who lives in the tower. We're sorry, 
but we hadn't seen you for so long and have forgotten all about you. Did you indeed? Well, you won't forget this. On your daughter's sixteenth birthday, she will prick her finger on a spindle and die. <laughs> Don't cry, my queen. Guards, find that old fairy and make her remove the curse. Your Majesty, I cannot undo the curse, but with a magic spell I can change it so that your daughter will not die. But she'll sleep for one hundred years until a handsome prince finds her and awakens her with a kiss. Burn all the spindles and spinning wheels. Anyone who dares to disobey this order will be executed. Oh, Your Majesty, this won't change a thing. The curse cannot be undone. Quickly, dear fairy, cast your spell. Oh dear, I have broken my magic medallion. I cannot cast the spell until it is mended. Please, can you help me? Thank you so much. I can save the princess now. Princess Rosebud grew up to be kind and sweet-natured. She could dance and sing beautifully, and was admired throughout the kingdom. On her sixteenth birthday. A great party was held. There was music, dancing, and games. Hunt the thimble was a favorite game with everyone. Somewhere in the palace was hidden a silver sewing thimble, and the first to find it would receive a prize. Everyone went off excitedly in different directions. As the princess searched, she came upon a door that she had never seen before. A strange whirring noise was coming from behind it. Whatever could it be? Suddenly, the door swung open, and to her surprise, she saw sitting by the window an old woman, busy at a spinning wheel. Rosebud entered the room, and the old woman looked up at her and smiled. Hello, dear girl. I'm glad you found me," she said sweetly. "I'm looking for a thimble, but what are you doing here?" said Rosebud innocently. "I've brought you a surprise for your birthday, my dear. It's a spinning wheel." The old woman seemed harmless and kind, but she was really Deadly Nightshade in disguise. Rosebud had never seen a spinning wheel in her life, and she was fascinated. "Oh, thank you." It's wonderful. Please show me how to use it. Of course, my dear," said the old woman, handing her the spindle. Now be careful, because the end is as sharp as a needle. However, before she had finished her sentence, the princess had pricked her finger on the poison spindle and had fallen to the floor. Oh dear me! What a shame! And just when we were getting along so well. Exclaimed the old woman, pretending to be shocked. Then, with a cruel cackle of laughter, she transformed back into the wicked fairy, Deadly Nightshade, and flew out through the window. Good day, dear lady. I thought no one lived in this part of the castle. What are you doing? I'm spinning, dear child. Look, isn't it beautiful? Yes. I love it. I've never seen anything like this before. Please, may I try? Of course, dear child. Let me teach you how. First, find me my spectacles. It's getting dark outside. I can't see anything without my spectacles. Can you help to find the old lady's spectacles? It is. Can we start now? Now sit down, my dear, and take the spindle. Now move your foot up and down on the pedal. You mean like this? Ow! Oh heavens! What happened? Please, someone help me! The poppy fairy knew instantly that something had happened, and went quickly to Rosebud's side. The queen and the king looked at her. In despair, she's only sleeping. The poppy fairy reminded them. Yes, 
but for one hundred years? When she awakes, everyone she has known will no longer be here, said the queen, sadly. Then everyone must sleep for one hundred years, exclaimed the poppy fairy, and she began to scatter her magical sleeping dust over the entire kingdom. Everyone fell asleep instantly. The roses in the garden began to grow into a wild, thorny hedge to protect and hide the princess from the rest of the world. Now we must wait for one hundred years, said the poppy fairy. I am so sick at heart. I can't stand the thought of losing my beloved daughter. I feel like crying all the time. This just seems like a very bad dream. The old fairy's curse came true. But the princess is still alive. And what happens when the princess awakes alone in the empty castle? I could put all of you to sleep, including the courtiers and the servants. And then when the princess wakes up, you will all be around to tell her what's happened. That's a great idea, dear fairy. Thank you. I shall need your help. Please help me to put everyone to sleep. When the princess wakes up, the musician will delight her with lovely music. One hundred years later, the story of the lost kingdom and the beautiful sleeping princess had spread far and wide. It is only a story, one king told his adventurous son. But if it's true, I shall find this sleeping beauty and make her my wife, replied the prince. He was a determined young man who was brave and kind. Then you must follow your heart, said his father. So the prince set out on his quest to find the lost kingdom and the legendary sleeping princess. The flower fairies used their magic to guide him on his journey and led him to the thorny rose hedge that protected the princess. As he lifted his sword high to cut his way through, the hedge shrank away and disappeared. He followed the path, and soon he stood facing the palace door. Walking through the palace, he noticed that everyone was sleeping. He crept by the king and queen, asleep on their thrones, and all the guests fast asleep in their fine party clothes. Perhaps somewhere nearby he would find his sleeping beauty. I've heard that within the old castle there lies a lovely princess who has been sleeping for a hundred years. If this is true, I shall find the castle, awaken the princess and marry her. Here is the castle. Soon I'll meet the most mysterious princess in the world. As the prince tiptoed up the staircase, the heavenly perfume of roses greeted him and led him to the room where the princess had fallen asleep. He saw her lying peacefully and was so entranced by her beauty that he kissed her gently. And, as the poppy fairy foretold, the spell was broken. When Princess Rosebud opened her eyes, she saw the handsome prince by her side. She felt her heart beat and knew instantly that she was in love. At this very moment, everyone in the palace awoke. Unaware that they had slept for one hundred years, they continued with the birthday celebrations, as if nothing had happened. Only the flower fairies and the prince knew differently. She is the most beautiful princess in the world. I will be very happy if she marries me. Dear princess, wake up. No, she doesn't hear me. How do I wake her up? I heard that the sleeping beauty could be woken by a kiss from a handsome prince. Ah, uh, what a wonderful dream I've had. I dreamt a handsome prince kissed me. It wasn't a dream. A wicked fairy cast a spell on you. I kissed you, 
to break the spell. You're free now. I'm so grateful to you, Prince. Let's go to the castle. I'm so excited about seeing all my loved ones. The king and queen smiled with happiness when they saw the prince and the princess together and so very much in love. A splendid wedding was planned, and all the people and fairy folk were invited to celebrate. All that is, except one, and she was left safely sleeping. The prince and princess Rosebud, of course, lived happily ever after. Here's our sleeping beauty. It's good that the prince has finally found you and broken the spell. I'm so happy for you. But what about everyone else? Does the prince have to kiss them all? Of course not. We can all help to wake them. Please, help us. Wake up the... Dear child, you've woken up. Prince Charming has found you at last. 